Okay, so you, you have this, this final awakening, you write this thing, then a year later, I think in 86, you wrote why, it was it why I left the left? I wrote an voice? essay, look, I, as I say, I, 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 w I was personally threatened by Elaine Brown. Um, and then in a, I have the tape of the phone conversation where she said, if you, if you should get run over, David, really, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to be your best friend because people will say I did it, something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a naked threat. Um, so I was afraid, uh, I fed to Kate Coleman, uh, who wrote an article for a now defunct left wing magazine. Uh, what's called The Party's Over, about the criminality of the Panthers, which I had discovered by personal investigation. Um, uh, but uh, uh, oh, I forgot. Well, get, getting to the Village Voice piece. Oh, the Village Voice, yeah. yeah. So I finally, in 1986, which is, it's a decade later, I wrote a piece, Why I Am Not No Longer a Leftist. And, uh, and referred to this, I did not name the killers, but I did refer to the murder and the pan that the Panthers had murdered her. And um, uh, Paul Berman wrote this piece uh, about the renegade Horowitz, the intellectual life and the renegade Horowitz. It was a vicious attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had me at the end of his piece cheering on Suicida, who was a psychopath that was a Contra in Nicaragua, whom I hadn't even heard of. When he called me, he said, and Horowitz is cheering, wakes up the next yeah. morning cheering Suicida. So basically, you, you went off the reservation officially with this article, and then you had said the knives were already out, with, but with, then... No, it was with the Reagan article. Yeah, with the Reagan article this was the one first... Was, this is right, this is right at the left. Right, so this was a, what, it was a year later, right? Yeah. I think it was 85 and 86, so a year later, so the knives were already out, and then this was like sort of the final door on. That's right, and that's on 1986, 87, that's like 30 years ago, is that what it is, something yeah. like that? In 30 years, my work has never been taken, the work, the, the ideas, my arguments with the left, why I'm no longer, I wrote a long essay on, on leaving the left, um, and why I left it. Uh, never uh, responded to. Um, the nation made one stab at it, but not a very good one. On the other hand, there's like 100,000 attacks on me on the internet <laughs> from leftists. So it's not like they don't think that I need to be refuted. They think it's just more effective to it. Pretending well, if it makes you feel any better, right before we sat down, I was scrolling my Twitter feed and some article was written about me where they referred to me as a right winger and then got a few other things incorrect about me. And then my own audience actually started attacking them on Twitter and then they, they didn't issue a retraction, but they changed the headline at least and changed one other thing, which of course is not journalistically yeah. uh, sound. But I guess maybe I'm picking up some of the, no, the Well, at first it hurts, but eventually <laughs> you, you get to be libel-proof. They, they libel you so much that... <laughs> it just seems ridiculous more than anything else. Yeah. It's just lazy, lazy and ridiculous. Yeah. Well, you, so, you know, I'm an easier target than you are because I vowed when I left the left that I was going to talk to the left, address them in the same way that they address everybody else. So, Oh, hey, I can talk hey. to them nicely. <laughs> yeah, you are very, very hard to demonize. Yeah. I, I'm sort of easy. So when you see, you, you, you had some nice things to say about me when you sat down, and when you see someone like me that understands the title of this book, that understands your journey and all that, do you think I was just, even though I'm, obviously our, we have 30 some odd years between us, that I was just late to the game in picking up what was going on here? Or do you think something also no. happened in the last couple of years with the left? Like I think it, two, just two things. One. First yeah. of all, starting with the McGovern campaign, that's when it started. The communist left infiltrated and took over the Democratic Party. Um, I mean, Tom Hayden, who is no longer with us, uh, was a cynical, anti-American, lying radical. Uh, and he was given the Medal of Freedom by Bill Clinton. Um, uh, he was a um, state legislator in the state of California. You can still see his work whenever you see Prop 65 that warns you about the uh, 
bad effects of uh, chemicals and your whatever. Oh yeah, it's everywhere here in LA. Yeah. Uh, um, but the Democratic Party took the left in. The, the, anti, the anti-American totalitarian, and I would say racist left, I will explain that more yeah, later, yeah. but racist left, was taken into the bosom of the Democratic Party in the Clinton administration. And with Obama, they got one of theirs in the White House. Okay, so, let, so let's pause there for a second. So when I hear you say that about the Clinton administration, that's hard for me to picture because those eight years were basically, I don't think we saw a lot of what we're seeing right now. So what, what am I missing? In well, you years? missed the, you didn't know the personalities uh, for one. Um, I've written a- uh, Let's put it this way. I think back to the Clinton administration very fondly. Still, that things were basically oh, they were terrible. That they were basically first of all, good. Like, so, let's let's Bill Clinton's was is not an ideologue in the way that Hillary Clinton is. Bill Clinton's ideology was moi. <laughs> <laughs> that was his ideology. And domestic, but, you, but that you would argue that's probably a saving grace then. Yes. In oh, this case. corruption is far better than communism. Yeah. Huh. I mean, if it weren't for the corruption of the Clintons, Bernie Sanders would have been a nominee. Huh. <laughs> Um, That's a great quote there. Did you, did you just come up? Corruption is far better than communism. That's a good one. It is. It is because you got to mean de- that. You can deal with it. Doesn't have the ideology that sweeps people along with it. Bill Clinton domestically was a uh, fairly centrist. Uh, you know, I don't have too much to quarrel with him there. Uh, uh, on foreign policy, he was terrible. Absolutely terrible. The World Trade Center was blown up in uh, 1993 uh, by Ramzi Youssef. He intended to kill 50,000 people or 200,000 to topple one of the towers on the other. The bomb is fired. It wounded 1,000 people. It killed six. Bill Clinton never visited the site. Dismissed it as an individual criminal act when it was inspired by the blind sheik who's just been... Um, Osama bin Laden, which should have been stopped in the 90s before the World Trade Center was... I mean, I can go, I've written a lot about this. So Bill Clinton. But, but in the case of that, in case of the, the first World Trade Center bombing, so what do you think was going on then in Bill Clinton's head? When, so this happens, he never visited. So what is, what's the ideology there that would lead him to that? It's an interesting question. I wish we had a, um, one of these Democrats on and you could um, ask them the question. Um, I'll, I'll try to get a former I, administration I, I, official. Just sure. to skip ahead, uh, in this book I've written, Big Agenda, I, I lay out what I think is going on, that, that uh, the Democratic Party is now a racist party. Uh, if you use the, the phrase, people of color, is a racist phrase. Identity politics is racist, and it's anti-American. The fundamental American idea is that we're all creatures of a divinity, or maybe nature's God, whatever, Jefferson wrote there, um, and equal in the eyes of our creator. Therefore, we should be treated equally by our government. And we have rights that are inalienable that government can't take away. So it's all about individual freedom and most importantly, individual accountability. When I was a kid in, in public schools, we always Uh, there was this phrase, regardless of race, color, or creed. Um, An American is somebody who doesn't look at your origins. We're a nation of immigrants that way. Don't look at your origins. Of course, if you come from a terrorist country, (laughs) maybe we should have a little vetting vetting process. Um, Identity politics is the opposite. What the left seeks, we are in a civil war situation now. Um, And the reason is, the reason it's so irreconcilable is that the left is is racist. It believes in a racial hierarchy. So if you're the right skin color, which is dark, you go to the head of the line for admissions to college, you go to the head of the line for a job, you go to the head of the line for a promotion, you go to the head of the line for almost anything. Mm-hmm. Everything's not diverse enough, so we'll take anybody. 
Um, so what would you say to the people that would say, well, white people had it good for a long time and, and Yeah, and white people and did a lot of they did bad head. things and they did good things. And one of the good things that white America did was to liberate the slaves. People forget that we inherited slavery. Uh, this is how I made myself notorious in the left by coming out against reparations for slavery 137 years after the fact. Um, America inherited a system of slavery. Slavery existed, I learned this from Orlando Patterson, who is a black left of center um, sociologist at Harvard who's written prize-winning books on slavery and freedom. Slavery existed for 3,000 years. Nobody ever said it was immoral. Not Jesus, not Moses, not Aristotle. Until a white Christian males in England, led by Wilberforce, said it's immoral. And an American slave owner, Thomas Jefferson, wrote it into the birth certificate of this country that all men are created equal and are given right to liberty by their creator. Within 20 years, the slave trade was ended. Um, the reason that America didn't initiate a civil war in 1776 to free the slaves, one of the biggest reasons was that England would have come and just retaken the colonies and reinstituted uh, slavery. Anyway, and within a generation or a little more, given in those days people lived shorter lives, uh, at the cost of uh, 350,000 Union soldiers, we liberated the slaves and liberated them throughout the hemisphere. So black people, uh, Americans can be very proud of their heritage. Um, you know, it's, it's a human heritage, so it's got a lot of bad spots, but you look at any other country in the world, and uh, forgive me, leftists, for saying this, <laughs> for this, saying one, is, nice this about one is the best. <laughs> <laughs> what other country do Haitians get in boats and risk their lives to get into? You think they're coming here to be oppressed? Right. I mean, everybody, everybody wants, wants to. to be here. And then the funny thing is, this at the same time, you go to watch some of these protests and the people that are screaming about how racist and evil and patriarchy and all this stuff, they're also the ones calling for open borders. They want everyone to share in the horror course, that is Well, the it would just States. destroy the country, as anybody with any sense knows. So how do It's you, all, but let me just say. Yeah. The left is, is, it it's, owes whatever ideas it has to Marx. It's the Marxist paradigm of the oppressors and the oppressed. And it's an economic, it begins as an economic and they've layered on race and gender. Um, so it, but so the fact is what determines a country's prosperity is culture, not classes, it's culture. America has a great culture. We take in, I mean, one of the things we do is we take in brilliant people from all over the world and uh, give them freedom to innovate. Other countries copy our innovations. Israel is the same way, it's why they hate it. <laughs> because they're bringing in people from all over the world, well, giving them opportunity. In, but uh, but also it's the freedom. Yeah. People do not appreciate freedom in this country. Obviously, since we, our universities are now totalitarian institutions, I can't go to a university without bodyguards. Yeah. And that's been true for the last 15 years. I've been physically attacked. If I didn't have bodyguards and if the university didn't put in place security, I could never get through a speech. Yeah. And I'm not alone. It's any conservative. No, I, well, it's all virtually they, any conservative. Yes. And, it's, and now it's moderates. And, and This and, is fascism. And it's, it's totally embedded in our university system. Yeah. Do you make a distinction between sort of the leaders who really understand the stuff that you're talking about? So the people who, who are the leaders of this leftist movement versus the, the bulk of the people who I think are following along without bad intentions. Like when I see all these kids who I, you know, I mock them on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, of course, and it's people go to demonstrations and get laid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and people are gullible and they don't think and they can't put two and two together. The phrase, uh, which I, I didn't want to skip this, people of color yeah. is a racist phrase. It's not English. Do we say, here's a box of crayons of color? Mm -hmm. It's French. That's the way French people speak. <laughs> Peuple de couleur, or whatever they say. Yeah. So it's a completely ideological construct. So is what that is its function? 
Well, let's look at the Mexico. Two main ethnic groups. The descendants of the Spanish conquistadors who slaughtered the indigenous Indians and the descendants of the indigenous Indians. When they cross the border, they're both people of color. Therefore, they're oppressed, both of them, mm -hmm. the conquistadors and the indigenous people. Yeah. They're oppressed, they deserve special sensitivities and special privileges. Maharajas in India are people of color. Beheaders in Raqqa are people of color. Who aren't people of color? White people. Yeah. White people are evil, bad. This is, a, this is, this is the racist ideology of our time. Is it also lacking in several other ways? I mean, for example, you could take American Indians, uh, people who've moved here from India or their grandparents moved here from India, or you could take Asian people of virtually any nationality, and they don't count in this leftist thing because they've because they're successful. economically. Well, the Indians haven't. Yeah. The Native Americans haven't. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I, that was a ridiculous You meant Indians. I just, I, oh, God, now I'm gonna, um, we're not gonna edit that out because I don't believe in that, but that was a completely idiotic statement. You, I, I you meant, meant Indians. I meant American, I was I meant Indians from India who moved to America, not right. Native Americans. Correct. Yeah. Correct. The Chinese, the Japanese. I said American Indians, not Native yes, Americans. That's but correct. thank you for that's, leaving. That's correct. Yeah. Um, I just ruined my Of course, career. they don't like success minority. You, know, you don't, don't look over your shoulder. <laughs> There's only arrows. <laughs> There's only arrows coming. <laughs> um, that was yeah. an Indian joke right there. Yeah. I mean, the, the left is, is pathetic intellectually. They don't have an argument. So they have to purge those groups because those groups... Yeah, that's why they have to shut you up because they can't deal with your arguments. It's really simple, straightforward. And, and it's so invaded our literary culture. The last two National Book Awards were given to racist tracts, one by Ta-Nehisi Coates. I can never remember the title. Um, it was just a rank racist, Coates. Uh, his, his, what, what inspired him to write the book, it's about how evil America is, but the, how, how, the, was the murder of his friend, not the murder, I, the killing of his friend by a policeman in Maryland. It turns out, as he tells you, that the policeman, uh, the policeman accused uh, the dead, uh, his dead friend of trying to run him over with his car. The policeman is black. So how, what does Coates say? He was thinking white. Now, if that isn't the purest uh, racism. Thing, yeah. And this one now, it's called Stamp from the Beginning. It's a semi-literate book that, that, it, I mean, that, that they have lowered their standards so dramatically, it's a, it still shocks me, because these are intelligent people, the people who give the awards, but I should know better. Um, but it opens with uh, the police shootings of criminals in the last year, which were totally distorted by Black Lives Matter and other leftists into uh, cops gunning down unarmed blacks. These were predators, and who did they prey, prey on? They preyed on black people. Freddie Gray, I mean, uh, you know, you could go on. Uh, I can't even remember the names, the guy in Ferguson. Um, they're criminals who prey on black people. But this guy has them as innocent blacks who are gunned down by racist cops. So at the opening of his book, which, is, which he has called the definitive history of racism in America, he's exposed as a liar, and he won the National Book Award. So our institutions have been just generally corrupted. Yeah, so what is... By this racist ideology of the left. So for a lot of people hearing this, I think a certain amount of people hearing this are gonna go, yeah, I get it. So you don't talk quite like this, which is why I think you're much harder to, uh, I, 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 I wanna see you with a, a, a so-called liberal. I don't call them liberals, because they're bigots. Yeah, well, I've had many progressive, uh, progressives on this show, and I treat them with the same respect that I treat anybody else. I, I, my general rule is I don't find that berating somebody or belittling them. No, but yeah, as I say, I made this vow 30, right. 30 years ago that I was going to berate the left. I was going to say, hey, hey, LBJ, how many kids did you kill today? <laughs> I actually, when I was still sort of leaving the left, I thought about that statement a lot saying, let's see, if I were a prisoner of war and I was in a room with my captor, would I rather it was LBJ or Ho Chi Minh? 
And it was a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's part of it, is that you just constantly say the worst thing about your intellectual opponents because there's no end here. That you just can, no, they can love, just constantly say anything uh, to you. Yeah, and That's why I love Milo. Because he just throws it right back in their face. And that's what really needs to be done. These people need to be embarrassed, although I'm probably beyond embarrassment. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, ABC News. Stephanopoulos is sitting there with Katrina Bannon, who, who, whose entire life has been spent apologizing for, defending, and uh, advancing communist causes. The hell is that? That's ABC. That's how far gone this country is.